I'm, my name is Tsugikazu Shibata, working for NEC, and come from Tokyo just uh, last night with uh, 12 hours of long flight. <laughs> so, so long flight. But uh, let's enjoy this afternoon. It's a good conference. I'm working for uh, LTSI project, and for today, I'd like to uh, present uh, three things. One is a kernel statistics and processes, and also history of LTSI, and around lessons learned in six years, six years, and further step for maintaining kernel for longer term. That's uh, three of uh, topics I would like to present for today. I'm, again, I'm Shibata. Uh, I'm a founder and project lead of LTSI, and uh, also, uh, LTS and LTSI advocate uh, that uh, try to uh, provide the value of using LTS and LTSI for the usage of uh, uh, real product and real services for mostly embedded. I'm also a board member of Linux Foundation and I'm involved with uh, Linux community since 2.4, it's a long years ago. As you know, Linux is one of the most successful open source projects and continue growing in 26 years, expanding because of expanding adoption for new areas, uh, started from enterprise and now cloud, network, smartphone, robotics, embedded IoT, and many other things, and using uh, uh, GPL v2. That, that is uh, uh, much better to share the code for everyone. And Linux is developed by the community, and uh, uh, for every year, every release, the 1,700 1, people are uh, participating, and uh, 230 companies are uh, working for Linux uh, upstream for every release, and uh, growing every year, uh, 1.5 million lines of code, and 4,000 files are uh, increased. And again, 26 years of history, so long years, so that uh, lots of maintainers have a great skill to manage the subsystem, and they have a professional knowledge of its area of technologies. So, so these kind of great technology places are only uh, in uh, open source, and uh, Linux is only the place. And here's the status of Linux kernel. Latest release is 4.13, and that was released in September 3rd this year, and 24 mega lines of code. It was increased 596 lines from 4.12, last, last one. The files were 60,000, and uh, 700 uh, files were increased from last release. And this development cycle was just 63 days. Uh, that was released in the, uh, uh, since 4.2 kernel was released. And also, current stable kernel is 4.13.9, and current development kernel is 4.14-RC5. I will try to explain some more details about this. Oh, so how many of days the kernel were uh, developed? I was count the uh, each uh, version. For the older one, 20 uh, year of 2015, it was five version were released, and mostly 60 x days are spent. And uh, in the 2016, it's also 60 days, and sometimes it's 70 days, and six release was happen. And for this year, uh, right now, it's 4.14 uh, is not yet released, but uh, maybe this one will be released in November. So five released in this year. And mostly, uh, longer one is uh, 80 days, but uh, 60 or s s some uh, 60 or 63. 63 days means uh, nine weeks, and 70 days means uh, 10 weeks. The most of the release will happen on 
Saturday or Sunday, so that 10 weeks or 9 weeks, that means 63 days or 70 days. And as you already know that Linux kernel is, uh, development is happening in the just latest release, the upstream uh, includes the new uh, patches and also fixes. This is the only the place uh, uh, change the kernel. And that patch is uh, reviewed by the skilled maintainers and tested, tested with other proposals to confirm without any conflict. And we'll co well coordinated development process for over thousands of developers. That's a kernel development. And this is uh, a picture of how Linux kernel is developing. Just after the release of uh, 4.n, two weeks of merge window will happen. Everyone can propose the new uh, patches for the merge window. And after that, dash rc1 will be released. And the uh, number of times of uh, release, dash release candidate will happen. That will be, that is the stabilization phase. And mostly dash rc7 or uh, 6, then the new uh, kernel will be released. And that will take uh, uh, nine weeks or 10 weeks, and that means uh, 63 days and 70 days. Okay. And here is a, a graph of how uh, Linux kernel source code is growing. And 4.13 is uh, nearly about 25 mega lines, and uh, most prob probably 414 will be over 25 millions of lines of code. Uh, this is a, you can, <laughs> uh, easy to understand, the constantly growing the source code. And Linux is uh, really a rapid release cycle. The early more than five times of chance to merge the code, code into upstream. But other projects, uh, maybe six months release cycle, means that uh, two times of chance to merge the code. For the developers, a lot of chance to merge the new code into upstream. But on the other hand, for the uh, production usage, so many chance to use newer, uh, newer kernel uh, to use the uh, uh, production. And that needs uh, more deeper knowledge to pick the right version. That is a, a kind of issue for uh, production. But I will try to uh, uh, explain about uh, more uh, other uh, uh, a chance to use a more beta, better version. The one is a stable kernel. That is a, a recommended branch for use, users who want the most recent stable kernel, and 4.10.1234. But uh, this uh, lifetime is uh, just the uh, uh, next version will be released. So that this one is not so much for use, useful for the production use, but uh, people who wanted the latest version, but uh, without uh, uh, experimental, experimental features, that, is be, that will be OK. OK. Here is the, uh, uh, let's get back our latest status. Latest release is a 4.13 at the white circle. And uh, uh, stable kernel is a 4.13.7. It's a seven times for a uh, stable version. And the uh, uh, development version is 4.14-RC5. That is a yellow circle. And uh, dash RC maybe six or seven. Then 4.14 will be released. That is the current latest situation. And for the people who wanted to use more longer term use usage for the kernel, that is LTS, long term stable kernel. That is an extended maintenance period of stable kernel. And the uh, kernel to continue to backport the bug and security fix to the single uh, kernel. And uh, this one will be picked uh, one version per year and uh, maintained two years so that this one will be more, much better than the stable kernel and the latest upstream version for the production usage. So that people understand this, this value of this one and uh, try, trying to use LTS for the real production. 
and why LTS? Only, this is only the tree to get fixed from the community and uh, uh, in the real use case, tested and confirmed kernel is really important, less important for newer features, newer experimental features. And fix will be released a number of times and should be applied frequently because of a security and bug fix, fix should be provided to the customers. And bugs found in LTS should be reported back to community and fixed in upstream and then bug ported to LTS. So what kind of LTS version is existing? Uh, you can see the, this uh, URL, it's a kernel.org. I, will, I was uh, copied this one. Most bottom portion, 3.2, is maintained by Greg Ben Hatching. It was released in 2012 for the purpose of Debian maintaining. And it was uh, six years uh, committed to maintain. And 3.10 is, is maintained by Willy Taru for his own uh, kernel uh, release. And 3.10, 16 is maintained by Ben Hutchings also for the Debian uh, kernel. 4.1 is maintained by Sasha Levin for he is working for some uh, uh, carrier uh, company to maintain the, that purpose. And 4.4 and 4.9 is maintained by Greg Core Hartman. He is a uh, uh, fellow of the Linux Foundation. He's a nearly neutral position. And 4.4 is uh, released in 2016, and it was uh, maintained for two years, so, so that uh, end of, become the end of life maybe next, next year, but uh, just recently announced that uh, it, was, it will expand it six years, so that committed to 2020, until 2020, that will be uh, maintained. And 4.9 is released in, uh, 2016, last year, and uh, continue to maintain 2019. This is a two years term. Okay. So how many fixes will be provided uh, for each of the kernels? Uh, there you can see a red one is the LTS, black one is uh, just a stable. So black one, uh, stable version is provided uh, less than thousands of fixes because about 60 years or 70 days period of time to maintain. But the LTS, latest LTS 4.9 is uh, now with uh, 4,800 of fixes are provided. That was uh, uh, shown in the latest upstream uh, fixes and then get backported to 4.9. This one will be really important. Let's see another uh, version. 4.4 .4 is uh, 5,600, and 4.1 is 4,000. Uh, 316, the 7,000 of fixes are provided. Uh, this is a difference between LTS and uh, another kernels. So this one will be really useful for uh, uh, production usage. And how many of fixes, yearly fixes, I was also counted. For uh, 4.9, this is, that is, is really maintained uh, 0.8 years, and the total commits were 4,000, so that yearly 4,000. And 4.4 is, uh, took uh, 1.8 years, so that uh, yearly 3,000. So that others are also 2,000 or 1,500 or so. Yearly, these fixes are provided from the community. That's the value of using LTS. These patches uh, can be applied our own product. That's, that's the value of LTS. So uh, we are working, I'm working for LTSI. So what is LTSI? That this is an open source community to create and maintain LTSI kernel for long term. This is based on LTS so that all the LTS patches can be applied and also add another chance to include further patches on top of LTS. This is LTSI. So because of uh, 
LTS is just only provided and not be able to add on top of LTS and newer features. But we are trying to provide a more chance to uh, latest features on top of LTS. That is more useful for using uh, production. And also, we are an uh, industry party to share the best practice and help companies to use uh, Linux for longer term. So we are discussing with other uh, companies and all other uh, projects to want it to use uh, Linux kernel for more longer term. Here is a picture of uh, how the difference between LTS and LTSI. The most bottom part is the LTS. This one is released one version per year and maintained two years, and frequently and large number of fix uh, provided. But on top of LTS, we are providing uh, help developers for upstream and auto test framework that is uh, done by uh, Timbird, like a, a Fuego project and a huge testing by our contributors. Because of our LTSI is joined by some of our companies wanted to more testing, and the test result will be shared in, on top of LTSI. That is another uh, value. And a share status information provide pr a problem among the industry people that, that we will provide a chance to discussing each other how the problem has happened and how the, it was uh, uh, solved by uh, each company. That is uh, another uh, value of LTS, LTSI. And be able to add re required feature on top of LTS. That's a real patch merge chance for LTS, on top of LTS. Yeah, we uh, started the LTSI project. First uh, presentation was happened in six years ago, 2011, in Prague, this place. It's, so now it's a six years uh, time. And we have started the uh, stable kernel for Android at, at the, in 2011. That was a time of uh, uh, very early stage of Android. And every Android release was used a different uh, kernel with a six month release cycle. So the handset manufacturers are really hard to use the latest kernel with uh, any other uh, SOC vendors patches and also some add on patches from Google. So that we really wanted to use a stable kernel and a use a longer term. In that time, it was a time of uh, Android 3.0, ice cream sandwich. It was used a uh, Linux kernel 3.0. We were started to uh, stabilize uh, Linux kernel 3.0. And uh, as I mentioned, number of different uh, kernel T, like uh, SOC dependent patches, and also Google dependent patches, and also in-house patches should be merged into the single kernel. That, uh, that was so hard. That's the uh, initial status. And we have a number of discussion is a, about the shape of LTS. And two years term and every year, release every year was that uh, happened in that discussion because of a uh, maintainer. Now, uh, maintainer is Greg Hartman. He needs to maintain uh, maybe yearly release and uh, three years term means that after three years, he should maintain three different kernels. If it expands more, then he needs to uh, maintain more uh, large, uh, large number of kernel. That is uh, one thing. And also, the Google was released every six months, a different kernel version, so that two years may be a reasonable term. And uh, uh, for both uh, companies and also maintainers' point of view. But right now, Every people wanted to use more longer term, and also Google is trying to be able to use more longer term, uh, longer end of longer life for the same kernel. So the situation becomes different. So that uh, maybe it will be a chance to change the two years maintain, uh, maintaining term and also uh, every year release. And. Uh, this one is the last one. Maintaining two LTS kernels is reasonable for that time. And another history is uh, uh, Greg is uh, maintaining 
of LTS and also LTSI. And we were released in 3.0, 3.4, and these kind of uh, kernel for yearly, mostly yearly basis. And latest one is 4.9 LTSI were already released in uh, early September. And this one is also integrated with Yocto project in uh, 2012. Uh, Yocto is uh, already used uh, many of embedded products, about 60% uh, of share, so that uh, uh, you are able to use Yocto and also LTSI. That is the current situation. And we have had a workshop and session to share information discussion issue among the industry and have many of use cases like uh, AGL or some other uh, embedded products. Okay, lessons learned in six years. <clears throat> I would like to present uh, three things. LTS and LTSI is the only a choice for products and upstream fast policy and security and fax, bank fix issue. For long-term usage, LTS and LTSI is just fit, as I explained that it by uh, uh, statistics. And LTSI, LTS provides two to 3,000 patches in a year. If that work should be done by a single company, that company needs a specific resource, just not, not only the resource, but also uh, the maintainer should have a deeper knowledge of a broad range of Linux kernel. So that makes uh, so hard. But uh, using LTS is uh, really easy. And now all the Android devices using LTS, as I checked out, most of the uh, uh, major uh, uh, handset manufacturers uh, kernel release, most of the uh, Android is using a stable kernel. And so LTS is a default choice even for the other use cases. And there is more longer term requirements. CIP is a, a civil infrastructure platform or wanted to use uh, more than 10 years, maybe 13, uh, 15 years of uh, usage. And AGL also, automotive grade Linux also wanted to use more than 10 years and Android Right, uh, lastly stated uh, for the uh, OS update for two years and the uh, security fix for after three years. So that makes a uh, five years time of uh, uh, lifetime of Android. So that uh, so such use case LTS and LTSI will be just fit for the requirement. And upstream fast policy. The, so maybe uh, six years ago, changing fast, uh, changing kernel for production fast, that makes problem for uh, long-term use case, because large number of fix may not applicable in the future because of the several thousands of patch from the community based on the vanilla kernel. If the production fast and the developer changes uh, some variety of portion, it, then the patch cannot be able to be applied. So that uh, upstream fast policy is really uh, important. And a huge discussion happened before kernel summit last year. Uh, companies wanted to add on top of LTS uh, some other uh, in-house patches, but uh, after the huge discussion happened, the upstream fast policy is really uh, important for a uh, long, longer term use case. So that's why, why companies, uh, developers need to participate in Linux, Linux kernel communities. The company's own change should be merged into upstream, that, that is upstream fast policy, and backported to LTS, that is a better way to use the kernel long term. But for that purpose, initial hurdle to join the community for the company's developer may be high, but really it's really important to 
uh, use kernel as a long term. And LTSI is keeping upstream fast policy so that the most of the uh, LTSI patch should be merged in the later upstream and the, then backboard to on top of LTS. That is upstream fast policy. And security and bank fixes. Uh, look back in the 60 years ago, security and bank fixes may not so much important. Just people are shipping only. But uh, right now, fixing the problem is a mandatory requirement. To apply community-provided fixes, the base code should be same as upstream. So otherwise, immediate patch release will not be possible. So that's another reason why uh, base code should be same as uh, uh, upstream co code, so that in-house patches must be as, as small as possible. That was uh, lessons learned in six years. Uh, that's a real case. And let's go to a further step of maintaining kernel long term. I was explaining the uh, history or uh, six years look back, and let's go, let's see uh, uh, in the future or near future. One is uh, I would like to point out is uh, a project travel for Android project that is try to isolate Android OS and hardware specific code. Uh, there is a vendor specific binder, uh, slash dev uh, BND binder. The all the vendor specific kernel code is uh, working under uh, this uh, binder. And with uh, vendor test suites and a compatibility test suites that will test uh, its interface so that that will uh, completely separate it. It's a, a vendor implementation and operating system. By this change, silicon specific patch and uh, LTS patch can be separated, applied separately. So the, uh, several thousands of, of LTS patch should be applied but uh, separately uh, vendor specific patches. That means once we have uh, uh, several uh, uh, handset using, used in uh, uh, different hardware, but the uh, uh, vendor specific portion is just only a, a black one, so that that one is separated, so that all the upper layer not, be, not necessary to testing. That is the value of a uh, uh, project travel. And also, LTS patches uh, provided thousands of patches. Then that is just test, should be tested in, in a single, uh, maybe single platform, not necessary to uh, testing on top of uh, another uh, hardware platform. That is the value of uh, project travel. Another point is uh, live patching. Uh, this is just an uh, enterprise portion. Feature of live patching kernel code was merged in since Linux 4.0. Uh, that, that was the result of uh, SUSE uh, K graft and read that from K patches. Uh, that this technology is patching the kernel, is running uh, current running kernel can be patched uh, dynamically, so that most uh, CVE can be safely to apply. But uh, it's depending on x86. So most of the uh, MS people, <laughs> you may be using ARM. Um, but uh, uh, this one is possible to uh, apply the immediate patching and uh, without a uh, downtime. By using this one, this live patching, some super important patch can be applied without downtime. That is another uh, point to maintain kernel long term, uh, safely. And another point is uh, kernel update mechanism is uh, provided by Core OS or Chrome OS. That, that is, uh, two, there is two different partition, and A is running current working, and during A is working, the uh, new kernel will be downloaded to partition B and, and reboot and boot up uh, when boot up B, 
then new account will automatically run. The Google is providing basic code called Omaha, is open source. And also different commercial implementation is available for the security, security reason. And this will easier to upgrade kernel and also easy to roll back if the new kernel is problem, then easy to get back to older kernel version. This one is, uh, this mechanism is uh, really nice. If the product uh, uh, are possible to add uh, extra uh, boot partition. So that uh, another point is a container-based OS. For embedded use case, container will be able to use as a packaging technologies. The container is basically provides uh, uh, ignore the problem of uh, library and language processors version. The most of the OS is uh, single uh, library. The version is should be fixed, but uh, by using container, the library should be included in the container the place, so that uh, OS can be separated for the variety of version of uh, uh, library and language processor like uh, Python or Ruby and so on. But uh, uh, building container OS is uh, different. OS means a uh, kernel and libraries, and just providing service for containers. Uh, and because of uh, uh, application can be used uh, uh, different libraries, so not necessary to provide uh, uh, extra libraries. Just only uh, container key package should be included for the container OS. So this, is, this should be minimum packages. So this one, uh, try create the container OS is uh, needs uh, uh, different uh, knowledge and experience. So this one is a bit difficult, but uh, need to consider for the futures. That is uh, uh, my uh, explanation. And uh, here is uh, this year's uh, development plan. We already released a version LTSI 4.9 in early September. And this one will be integrated into Yocto 2.4. And the uh, AGL guys are trying to use uh, Yocto 2.4 for uh, Darwin Dub release. And that will be uh, uh, kind of uh, streamlined. And here is uh, expected next year's plan. 4.14 is already decided to use LTS for next year. And we will have a six months uh, time to wait. The people will uh, put, the, put the, their own patch into 4.15. Oh, sorry, 15 and 15, not uh, 15 and 16, 17. Sorry, I have a mistake. The, uh, such kind of six months time frame we are able to uh, send patch to upstream and then uh, merge into LTSI merge window from uh, uh, June time frame. Then we will be able to uh, provide a LTSI mailing list, your own patch, uh, to include LTSI. And then that will be released in uh, around uh, August time frame. And then that will be, sorry, also uh, Yocto, merge into Yocto and uh, another AGL version. That is our plan. But uh, please uh, uh, join us, uh, our mailing list or some other session. We will share the latest news, how we will going on. That is our uh, plan. OK, that's most of uh, my uh, explanation. You may be expected how the 4.9 or 4.14 uh, will be expanded more longer term. <laughs> but uh, right now, we are not be able to explain because of uh, our maintainer's uh, uh, workload becomes much more. But uh, right now, uh, Fuego or uh, Renaro is considering uh, much more uh, automated testing framework. If that will be uh, much more uh, efficient, then we may be expanded. Uh, LTS may be uh, expanded more longer years. 
but uh, let's wait or let's push them <laughs> to much create a much better uh, testing framework to be done. That will also be uh, beneficial for everyone for getting more longer term uh, LTS version will be provided. That is uh, most of my presentation. And uh, ah, that is the conclusion. LTSI was started to fill the gap between community and the industry, uh, but still there is a gap. We will continue to uh, uh, our activity to discuss both sides to better align each other. And upstream fast policy is be uh, very important for uh, open source. And why don't you join LTSI? We have a mailing list and uh, some session of, of of our uh, Linux Foundation uh, conference. Thank you so much. Uh, we have some minutes. Uh, uh, we have some minutes. If you have any question, uh, please raise your hand. Yes, please. Why the support is in upstreaming? Uh, what kind of support uh, does LTSI will provide it? Isn't it? I, is your cost? Uh, yeah, for upstreaming support from uh, LTSI project is that to, to uh, provide a guidance uh, to how to uh, send parts to upstream. And that is uh, our su su support. So, uh, someone from a, a Korean or a Chinese company come to us, we have this kind of patches and uh, don't know how to send patches to upstream and no, don't have a relationship with uh, any of uh, upstream developers. We will provide uh, some guidance to, hey, you will be able to come to his, this maintainer. He will be help, he, help you. That is our uh, support. Anything else? Yes, please. Sorry, I could not hear you. Oh, microphone is over there. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, preempting preemptive patch in the LTS relationship is that is your question. Yeah, actually, we are discussing a number of times how we will be able to merge or uh, uh, align preemptive RT and LTS. But uh, now uh, Linux is not yet uh, accept preemptive RT. We are upstream fast policy, so that unfortunately it's not yet uh, aligned. But uh, I think preemptive RT is trying to align, the, uh, trying to provide their patch uh, as the same as the LTS version. So uh, if people wanted to use preempt RT with LTS, then that will be pos possible. That is current situation. Is this answer for your question? Okay. Thank you. So it's time. Thank you so much. <laughs>